Good afternoon. Uh, thank you, George and uh, Tom Cleaver, for having me here. So as uh, George said, uh, trying to share with you uh, some of our work on how to suppress the polysulfide shuttle. Um, I also found that the green pointer actually works. OK. So maybe next time. <laughs> uh, so uh, the work uh, that was done, uh, my graduate student, Derek Moy, he did all the experimental work. And this was uh, funded by the uh, University of Southern California Local Hydrocarbon Research Institute. OK, so uh, I think you've uh, heard enough about uh, why we are doing lithium sulfur batteries, but so one last time, I suppose. Uh, so we, we all are in the uh, mode of trying to uh, build uh, high energy density systems. And uh, as you know, lithium sulfur does not have a huge market share of the re rechargeable lithium battery market. So if we can get to those, uh, those metrics of uh, uh, 1,000 milliamp per gram and maybe uh, over a thousand cycles, maybe there is something that we can do with it over a larger application space. But then the challenges, as we have heard many, many times already, is that we have a short cycle life. We, um, we have relatively low utilization of, uh, of active materials over the cycle life, over the, over the lifetime of the, of, the, of the battery. And we have premature uh, failure by electronic shorting. And I, and I think the elephant in the room is also the rechargeability of the anode, which hasn't uh, been talked about as much, but I think it's slowly starting to get attention. So, um, um, so what have we been uh, doing about this? So when we, uh, 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 let's, uh, let's take a look at the, uh, the polysulfide shuttle again. I call it the bane of the polysulfide shuttle because it's been amply blamed for all the problems that, that we have. And, um, and so we have self-discharge and uh, poor charging efficiency. Uh, we also have irreversible capacity losses, and that is uh, our version of the cartoon. So I don't think you're going to learn anything more from that cartoon, so I'm going to skip that. Uh, however, uh, there have been a lot of efforts, as you, as you know here, uh, with uh, trying to address the polysulfide shuttle. And uh, the first one being the electrolyte additives, which has been pretty uh, successful as a baseline with lithium nitrate, a consumable additive. Uh, then all these interesting uh, uh, encapsulation techniques that you've seen with carbon nanostructures and also porous materials that will pretty much slow down the transport of uh, polysulfides. And of course, the uh, holy grail is to have a, a solid electrolyte that will completely exclude uh, uh, the polysulfides and just let lithium ions go through. So when we started to work on this problem, this was back in 2013, I was trying to figure out how we can approach this. and. Uh, so before we could embark on trying to find some solutions, I wanted to understand the scope of the problem. And so uh, how to quantitate really this polysulfide shuttle and try to get a measure of how much of, uh, of this shuttling is happening. So what we set out to do was to uh, uh, measure the shuttling process to scope out the problem. And also, if we were trying to uh, make some improvements, then I should uh, be able to uh, uh, figure out what exactly these improvements are doing to the shuttle itself. So, uh, so essentially, we wanted to measure the rate of shuttling or the shuttle current. And so measurement of the polysulfide shuttle current would be a very useful thing to do. And so when we, uh, when we started to do this, uh, how did we go about it? Um, so this is the uh, description of how we measure the shuttle current. So we take a cell, um, a typical cell. I'll show you in a second what, what these cells are. So we would start with uh, uh, cycling the cell about three times so that we can get all the electrodes formed. And then we would discharge it to the targeted value of, uh, uh, of depth of discharge, so let us say 10% uh, depth of discharge. And then you would uh, measure the open circuit cell voltage, allow that cell voltage to equilibrate for a little while, and then hold the cell voltage at that open circuit value for uh, uh, with a potential stat and measure the steady state current. So uh, when you try to do that, uh, this, is, this is what you will, uh, you will measure. So you'll see a, first a very uh, transient rise of current. And then finally, you will see a steady state value. And that turns out to be the steady state shuttle current. So now, if you were to um, have an additive like lithium nitrate, you can see, well, without the additive, the shuttle current is uh, significant. Whereas with lithium nitrate, 0.25 molar of that, your shuttle current has gone. So this seems like a good method of uh, assessing whether you are having polysulfide shuttling or not. Okay. 
And our, uh, our cell design is uh, very typical, so uh, carbon 60% and 30%, I mean, sulfur 60% and about 30% of carbon and 10% of uh, PVDF. And we use the TFSI uh, electrolyte and uh, we have a lithium metal anode. Okay, so uh, uh, we, all, we all also are quite familiar that unless you, uh, you are operating the soluble region, the polysulfide shuttle is not an issue. So if you, if you were to just look at our uh, current voltage, uh, uh, sorry, the voltage time cur uh, depth of discharge curves, you find that we are, this is the soluble region, and this is the only place where you will actually see the shuttle current. So if you measure the shuttle current as a function of the depth of discharge, you find that uh, uh, the shuttle current is fairly high when you start with, but as you go down to the insoluble region, the shuttle current actually falls. And so if you have lithium nitrate, you should not see anything in that region. So it kind of corroborates the fact that you are indeed measuring the shuttle current and not some, something else. Okay, so, uh, so we, we therefore confirm that the shuttle current is actually only present only when the soluble sul polysulfides are present. And there's a direct evidence that lithium nitrate actually affects this process. So these are sort of uh, sanity checks that you have to make as you, as you go along. Okay, so uh, uh, now, now let us, uh, okay, so if you're really interested in the shuttle current measurements, uh, you, could, uh, you could go and look up uh, this article that was published in 2015. And I also understand that OXIS is uh, trying to use this as a method for rapid screening of various electrolyte compositions. Uh, and I'm happy to hear that because it can be pretty uh, easy to set up and run these types of experiments. Okay, so what, what have we done about the polysulfide shuttle? So what we've done is we've taken something called the mixed conduction membrane and have that selectively transports lithium ions and introduced it into the cell. So the way we put it in here is uh, we have this mixed conduction membrane. In a moment, I'll tell you what that is. Uh, it is uh, sandwiched between two layers of separators, so the electrolyte on this, liquid electrolyte on this side, and liquid electrolyte on this side. But then you have uh, uh, a layer called the mixed conduction membrane. So the mixed conduction membrane is a non -por first of all, has to satisfy the requirement of being non-porous, so that doesn't let any polysulfides go through. It's impervious to any soluble polysulfide species. Uh, it should have excellent ionic conductivity, so fast ion transport for lithium. And uh, in this particular case, we are not using a solid conventional solid electrolyte. What we are trying to do is take advantage of lithium ion transport using an electrochemical mechanism, much, much in the same way as uh, lithium ions are transported in, in the cathode and the anode of a lithium ion battery. Okay. Uh, oh, I didn't actually do that. Okay. Uh, the, uh, uh, the, uh, the other requirement for such a system is that this particular membrane has to also be electronically conducting, otherwise it will not sustain the electrochemical processes. Uh, further, it, this material has to be stable in contact with the polysulfides and not electrochemically react with them. So it should have a, an electrode potential of something greater than 2.7 volts so that doesn't actively react with the, with the polysulfide. Okay, so um, what are the examples of these materials? Are these well-known cathode materials that are used in lithium ion batteries? Lithium cobalt oxide, uh, lithium nickel cobalt oxide, nickel manganese oxide, so on and so forth. So uh, we can use any of these materials. And in a moment, I'll show you how exactly this is done. So you take this mixed conduction membrane, which means it conducts lithium ions and also electrons. And here you see that it's deployed here between the uh, two layers of separator, there is no reaction of the polysulfides with this layer at all. There is no reaction per se. However, the injection of lithium ions and the removal of lithium ions across this layer occurs by the same mechanism, as I said, of the charge and discharge of a lithium ion battery. So you have electron flow and ion flow coupled together as a result of which you can actually transport these lithium ions fairly rapidly. And we can discharge these uh, lithium ion cells at very high rates. I mean, 2C rate is uh, pretty common these days. So lithium ion transport through these structures should be fairly fast. And indeed, we do find that this, this is actually true. OK, so uh, the other way of looking at this device is sort of like a back-to-back -back split cell. I mean, if you were to think about it, uh, just to make sense out of it, it's just uh, uh, two back-to-back -back lithium 
uh, ion electrodes put together, and uh, you is pretty much shorted across this, and that's how lithium ions are getting conducted. Okay, so uh, so given the fact that this this particular membrane is uh, electronically conducting, uh, you do need uh, you do need uh, two layers of uh, insulating separator on either side of the membrane. So if you assemble the cell, you have to sandwich it between two layers. Okay. So let's see uh, whether this particular device uh, accomplishes the purpose that, uh, that we set out to do. So uh, let, me, let me just describe to you how we actually make this membrane. We, uh, we start with, uh, we've taken lithium cobalt oxide as a good example of uh, how, how, how we might actually uh, deploy this membrane. So we, we bought commercial lithiated cobalt oxide, ball mill it with, uh, uh, with uh, the binder and coat it on an aluminum substrate, dry it, and then hot press it. And you can then cut it into discs. So this is, this is how it actually looks once you, uh, once you try to fabricate these membranes. So, and it's also very flexible, and you can get uh, freestanding membranes about 50 micron in thickness, uh, which are pretty dense. So when I say pretty dense, I, you always want to know what, what I mean by that. So uh, we did a permeability test, and the permeability test is very simple. Uh, you just build a little permeation cell where you house the, uh, 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 the circular membrane in between, and on one side you have a, a colored substance, uh, in this particular case is an anthraquinone disulfonate, uh, so that you can watch the permeation of anthraquinone disulfonate to the other side uh, using spectrophotometry. And you can see that uh, uh, this particular picture was taken after 72 hours, and you, uh, you, can, you, you can believe me that there is no change in color there. And uh, uh, it was established by spectrophotometry that there was no detectable amount of uh, uh, material crossing over. So this was a good uh, proof of concept for, uh, for initial studies. And so we went on to uh, start deploying these in actual coin cells and trying to cycle them. Okay, so the first thing that we did was, after all, we are armed with this tool of trying to measure the shuttling process using the shuttle current as a measurement technique. So we said, ha-ha, let's supply this to the, uh, to, the new, uh, uh, to the mixed conduction membrane cell. And lo and behold, we find that the shuttle current with the, uh, with the LCO membrane between the two electrodes is actually much, much lower than with the cell without the membrane. And in fact, it is about comparable to that with lithium nitrate. Okay, so the shuttle current can be significantly reduced by using the mixed conduction membrane. Now, if you were to, uh, if you were to believe this, then we would go next step is uh, say, okay, let's say we can start charge and discharge the cell, and you find that you can actually charge and discharge the cell, and the voltages are very comparable, and also you find that your discharge capacity is much, much higher than without the membrane. So in, in which case you're looking at the charge to discharge ratio uh, here, the Coulombic efficiency is actually pretty good. So we continue to actually cycle these cells, and so we're looking at now cycle life and Coulombic efficiency. Sorry for the, uh, all these lines in the chart, but if you were to look at the Coulombic efficiency, which is the top two lines, with and without the membrane, you find that with the membrane, you can get Coulombic efficiencies as high as uh, 96, 97 percent, whereas uh, with the, without the membrane, you are uh, down in the 80s. And if you were to cycle these cells for uh, over uh, 200 cycles, you find that there is a big difference in the fade rate. Okay. Now, this is not sufficient, because although you have a big difference in the fade rate, it only proves the point that stopping the shuttle is not the answer to all our problems. And, and I say this only because uh, when I started out, I thought the shuttle was the main culprit for, for, for destroying this uh, cycle life of the battery. But here, we apparently have stopped the shuttle, but there are still uh, major issues with the lithium sulfur battery that bring down the cycle life. However, since uh, to keep the tempo of this talk going, I said, okay, let us, uh, let's, uh, uh, let's look at what, what, the actual, what, what is the benefit of using the shuttle. Now, we already know that the, the polysulfide shuttle happens only in the soluble region of the, uh, of the curve. So, so here is our soluble region, and so let us say if we were to cycle the cell only in the soluble region, we should be able to expose the benefits of stopping the polysulfide shuttle to, uh, uh, to the maximum possible. So how do you just cycle in the soluble region? So we, we figured that we, if we were to cycle the cell at very high rates, charge and discharge them at, for example, C over 2 rate, you are pretty much operating only in the soluble region. 
Okay, so if uh, so, C over two with a cutoff of about 1.8 volts for the cell would pretty much keep you only in the soluble region and will allow you to expose the effect of uh, of, of of the uh, stoppage of the polysulfide shuttle. So we uh, we continued to uh, test these cells now cycling at C over two charge and C over two discharge. And here you find that if you were to look at the uh, uh, the capacity retention as a function of cycle life. The, 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 uh, the cells which had the LCO membrane, or the mixed conduction membrane, uh, seemed to lose almost no capacity at all. And on the right, if you were to look at the uh, cell voltage versus capacity retention curves, after 170 cycles, this thing has the same capacity uh, retention as, uh, as you started in cycle one, whereas the cell without the membrane seems to rapidly degrade. So, uh, if we were to work just in the soluble region, yes, we have an answer to the problem. But if you were to go into the insoluble region and, and you get all this precipitation of lithium sulfide and the segregation of material and the redistribution of material, this, the story is quite different. Okay, so, uh, uh, so the capacity fade uh, definitely is lower with the, uh, with the lithium cobalt oxide membrane, but the effect of, uh, the effect of shuttling on cycle life can be uh, can be mitigated to a large extent, but not completely. You've been looking at these uh, charge-discharge curves, and there hasn't been anything different about using the lithium cobalt oxide membrane in terms of the voltages. So if you were to run an impedance uh, curve on this, you find that uh, the resistances are very comparable. The high-frequency resistances are very comparable within the variabilities of making coin cells. I would say they are pretty much the same. I don't find a huge difference in this. So. Uh, so now, after we have cycled this cell for about 200 cycles, we decided to open up these cells and see what the status of the membranes were. Okay, so we take a look at the LCO membrane, and it looks uh, uh, very similar to what, what we had seen before we put that in. And we also looked for things that, had, uh, that could have been incorporated in that. We could not find any sulfur. We could not uh, see any change to the composition of the lithiated cobalt oxide membrane. And that's good news, because if there was any reactivity of the polysulfides with the lithiated cobalt oxide, it would have shown up in an XRD. So we didn't find any other, any other phases other than lithiated cobalt oxide that we started with. And when we looked at the lithium electrode, you find that there's a, there's a significant difference in the morphology of the lithium electrode. I do not fully understand this, but at this moment, it looks like the uh, lithiated uh, cobalt oxide seems to give you a more smooth morphology compared to the one uh, where we didn't have the membrane. And on a closer look at these surfaces, you find that uh, the, the, the surface of, these mem of, the, of the lithium electrode after 200 cycles seems to be fairly uniform, whereas uh, the one without the uh, MCM uh, membrane or the mixed conduction membrane seemed to be patchy with, uh, with insulating material. So now you get curious as to what this material is, and I'm, I'm hoping that is sulfur because it will prove the point that we haven't, uh, uh, that, we have, that we have actually stopped the sulfur from migrating to the, uh, uh, to the lithium electrode. So, uh, so started to do some EDAX analysis and look at sulfur. Okay, so when you, when you are doing EDAX analysis and looking for sulfur, we are using lithium TFSI as a salt. So uh, there is another source of sulfur that, that can actually uh, appear at the anode, which is uh, material coming from lithiated TFSI. So, however, lithiated TFSI is also associated with fluorine, okay, uh, by, the, by the nature of the molecule. So the sulfur to fluorine ratio in lithiated TFSI is, uh, is a fixed number. So, so we decided to compare the sulfur to fluorine ratios for both these surfaces. And so here are those numbers. We just focus on, on just these numbers. So on, for lithiated TFSI, you have a ratio, sulfur to fluorine ratio of 3.63, whereas for the lithiated, uh, lithium electrode, which, which did not have a, a, a stopping membrane, uh, we had a very large uh, number of sulfur to fluorine, which means it's the excess sulfur. And with the case of the lithiated cobalt oxide membrane, we had a number that was much smaller. So I would, I would argue that maybe we were able to stop about 80% or so of the, of the transport, because we still have a little bit more sulfur than we would like to see. And so, uh, and of course, we have a coin cell design, which means that there is electrolyte that can go around the edges of the electrode, and so on and so forth. So, uh, so I know I've, I've rushed through this quite a bit, but. Uh, 
I, I think we have a few conclusions here. First of all, uh, the mixed conduction membrane does actually block and stop the polysulfide from moving around. It does improve the utilization of sulfur because you can keep the sulfur on the cathode side. It protects the lithium electrode largely uh, from being degraded by sulfur compounds. We don't know whether that's a good thing or a bad thing, but uh, definitely we find a lot less sulfur when we use the lithiated cobalt oxide membrane. Um, and I think we, 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 have, we have a material that you don't have to go and invent. You, you already have these materials around, and some of them are uh, uh, fairly uh, easy to obtain. So these are well-proven cathode materials. You can incorporate them in these cells, and they are fairly robust to cycling. So uh, some of the unproven benefits that we think might come out of this is that you could, uh, you could prevent premature failure of these cells by electronic shorting because this membrane is fairly dense and strong. And uh, it's made out of a, literally a ceramic type of material, which is lithiated cobalt oxide. We also have the possibility of isolating the cathode side from the anode side. And you, we've been talking about different solvents for the cathode and the anode. And uh, here's, a, here's a possibility of doing that, because you don't need liquid electrolyte to move around in the cell. So, uh, so that, that, that is essentially the, uh, 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 all, all that I really wanted to say. And if you wanted to uh, get more information on this, we just, uh, just published a paper very recently, which has uh, a lot more details on what you've heard. OK, um, and uh, thank you for your attention. Okay, beautiful talk. Are there questions? Yes, here's one and another there. Uh, uh, very nice talk. I just want to ask you, uh, what's the mechanism when you use uh, lithium cobalt oxide membrane oh. to prevent the shutter effect? It's, uh, it is a physical no. uh, prevention or uh, chemical ob no, absorption? You, you, you basically inject lithium ions on one side of the membrane by the electrochemical mechanism, just like you do deintercalation and intercalation in a, in a, in a cathode of a, of a lithium ion battery. And so lithium goes in and lithium comes out. So this intercalation, if you want to think about it, is intercalation on the front face and deintercalation on the other face. And then you have electron transport occurring because it's an electrochemically field-driven process, so you can actually transport lithium ions uh, from one side to the other. Yes. Thank you. Very good talk. Uh, what is the porosity of your membrane? Okay. Um, uh, to be honest, I have been asked that question, and I have not measured it. But the uh, the it's it's uh, under an SCM. It is very very dense. Okay. And uh, this permeability test is the only one I have to uh, um, to uh, to sort of support the fact that it is non porous. It doesn't have true pores. That's that's one way of putting it. But it is, it is like a lithium battery electrode. I mean, if you press it hard enough. And, and it's not dense as in a sintered form because it has got a binder. But uh, it looked like a lithium battery electrode. Thank you. More questions? I see several hands. Did you uh, put a carbon with LT LCO? No, it's, uh, it's efficiently conducting to do the job. and. Uh, I am sure carbon will have a beneficial effect uh, on, for certain types of cathode materials, maybe like lithium ion phosphate or uh, another cathode material. But most of these are, have some conductivity, and so uh, it seems to be working fine. Yeah. S3, uh, how much weight does the LCO uh, add to the system, and what's, what's your energy density look like? Uh, I knew somebody would ask this question, <laughs> yes. So, <laughs> well, um, so clearly, uh, we have a 50 micron um, thick membrane, okay? And uh, there is no need for it to be that thick if it is, was non-porous, okay? So we didn't want to have a porous membrane when we start working on this concept. So uh, we had to start somewhere. Uh, so I'm, I'm thinking that uh, we could probably get it down to about 10 microns by the method that we are using. And then, of course, there are all these interesting ways of doing, putting coatings on, which like PLD or on a separator, you could fill it up. So you can, in principle, reduce this to uh, an order of one or two microns, I think. Uh, I don't have a proof for that, but that's just my guess. No. Yeah. Um, I have two questions. Do you know about the ionic uh, conductivity in your membrane? 
Do you measure that? Um, it's very hard to measure ionic conductivity where it's mixed with electronic conductivity. So it's extremely hard. You have to use blocking electrodes and try to get some sense out of it. But I showed you one impedance plot that essentially is that of the lithium sulfur cell with the membrane between. And it's at least as conducting as the, uh, as the uh, electrolyte, uh, liquid electrolyte that you have in there. It's hard to believe. Uh, first of all, uh, it's not so hard to believe if you believe that the lithium ion battery can be discharged at 2C rate, which means stuff just goes into the electrode and comes out. Lithium ions are moving at that rate. So uh, uh, then, of course, comes the question as to what, at what rate will, will this max out, okay? So will, can you discharge it at a, a 100C rate as somebody was uh, trying to propose the other? I don't know. I don't know. That's where it probably will stop. I mean, it, it probably 2 or 3C is probably okay, but I don't know how far you can push it. And depending on how thick it is, I'm sure. So actually, my uh, second question vanished with your answer. So thank you. Okay, thank you. <laughs> There's one more question and maybe another. Yeah, uh, based on the description of how did you measure this uh, uh, shuttle current, so it looked like uh, that you just measure self-discharge at, at the time of, uh, you know. So in this case, you assume that you know, the shuttle current is the main cause for the self-discharge, right? Yeah, so I'm really not assuming anything. Um, when we, when, I think we've been talking about it all of yesterday. We, we said this is not a thermodynamic system. It is uh, things are happening in there, right? So if it was a true thermodynamic system at equilibrium, then you, if you have an open circuit voltage and you match that open circuit voltage on your potential stat, there should be no flow of current. That would be the definition of a, of a system at equilibrium. But when you try to do this and there is flow of current, that means there are processes happening in here. So I'm, you're absolutely right. I'm attributing all of that to the, uh, to the transport of the shuttle. But I can't think of anything else at the moment that would contribute to it. No. Yeah, Self-discharge that, that causes maybe you know, complicated from different aspects. So you know, if you, here if you uh, yeah. only consider you know, the current part in the liquid side. So if, if, for example, uh, just sulfur diffused away from the, uh, from the surface of the electrode, that would not show up as current. That's true. So we are measuring only those processes that are coupled from one side to the other. I understand. Yeah. Another question? I actually have a question. So you yeah. mentioned some other cathodes, and you can think of all the ones that have been used. Are you, do you think there are other cathodes that might be better than cobalt oxide? Yes, I think, I think we just picked cobalt oxide because it was convenient. But uh, uh, we just have to uh, make sure that the electrode potential is above that of, uh, of the sulfur electrode. Otherwise, it would start participating in reactions, and that would complicate life. So, uh, uh, so the cathodes I listed specifically are in that region of potential. Um, I, as much as I said lithium iron phosphate might work, we. Uh, we have to make sure that it's, it's in the fully charged state, so that it's at the right voltage. So uh, I don't know whether I answered your question, but uh, that, uh, the criteria would be uh, to have the potential of that, uh, the, the, the reduction potential of that electrode fairly positive, you know, about that of the sulfur couples. No, that's yeah. beautiful. Thank you. So thank you, Sri. That was a wonderful talk. Thank you. Yeah. So this concludes the morning session. Time for lunch which is in the usual place. So uh, see you in the afternoon. <laughs>